Good evening ladies and gentlemen. We're back once again with another video. So this time my tutorial video is going to be over ionic bonds. So let's go ahead and get started. Why do atoms form bonds? As I previously talked about in the covalent bonds videos, atoms form bonds in order to become stable, which means they want a full outer ring or shell of electrons. So let's talk about Lewis dot structures again. In Lewis dot structures, element symbols are shown with the number of valence electrons displayed around them. So for example, let's go ahead and take a look at beryllium. I will put the element symbol for beryllium, and then I will put the number of valence electrons that beryllium has. And say if I want to show fluorine. I will draw the element symbol for fluorine and then put the number of valence electrons fluorine has around it. Now, the great advantage of using Lewis dot structures is that when you're making ionic bonds, it makes it much easier to show these bonds instead of using the Bohr models, which can take quite some time. So we'll be using Lewis dot structures for these demonstrations. It's important to know that in ions, when a negative ion is made, it is called an anion. That means it has a negative charge. That means it's actually gained an electron. So I'll also write over here to the side, gained electron. And then if there is a positive ion, which is called a cation, that means it is, has lost an electron. So now let's take a look. Here are our valence electrons. So here's a chart showing how many valence electrons the elements have in each group or each column. If you notice the elements that are in the alkali metals column or this very first column, all of them have one valence electron. In the second column, the alkaline earth metals, all of them have two valence electrons. And if we was to come over here in the nitrogen family, all the elements in the nitrogen family have five valence electrons. The valence electrons also determines chemical properties for the elements. And moving on to our next slide, if you notice, if you look, the oxidation number shows the charge that the element ends up getting when it either gains or loses electrons. So for example, the elements in the alkali metals column, they lose one electron, so that means they have one more positive charge than negative charge. That's why they have a, end up with a plus one charge. The elements that are in the alkaline earth metals, they lose two electrons, which means that they have two more positive charges than negative charges. So that's why you see a plus two right here. And then if you look at the elements in the nitrogen family, the elements in the nitrogen family have a negative three charge, which means they actually gain three electrons. That's why they have a negative three charge. So now, an ionic bond is a bond formed from the attraction between oppositely charged ions. So let's go ahead and do an example one now. First, we're going to look at the number of valence electrons sodium has. So here's Na. If I look up to the top, sodium has one valence electron. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that or show that with the Lewis dot structure. Then I look over at chlorine. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. And so I'll go ahead and show that for chlorine it is important to note that ionic bonds are formed between metals and non-metals so now looking at this bond right here is it easier for chlorine to give up seven bases of electrons to sodium or sodium to give up his one base electron to chlorine? You guessed it, it's easier for sodium to give up his one valence electron to chlorine. So now let's look. Sodium had 11 protons and 11 electrons, which gave it a charge of zero. But now it has 11 protons and 10 electrons, which gives it a positive one charge because it has one more proton than electron. And if we look on our oxidation number chart, we look all the way up to the top here, sodium. Sodium has a plus one charge because it gives away one electron. Now let's look at chlorine. Chlorine had 17 protons 
and 17 electrons, which gave it a zero charge. But now it has 17 protons and 18 electrons, which gives it a negative one charge. Why? Because it has one more electron than proton. And if we locate chlorine on the periodic table, here's chlorine. And if we go to the top, you notice chlorine now has a negative one charge. So sodium has a positive one charge. Chlorine has this negative one charge. And what causes these, what causes this bond is the attraction between the opposite charges because opposites attract. So that positive one and that negative one charge causes those opposites to attract. Let's take a look at another one. Now, here is the same chemical formula, but now we're looking at an ionic bond using the Bohr model. And this, the Bohr model actually shows why the elements become stable. If you notice, sodium gives its one base electron to chlorine. And when sodium does that, now this outermost electron is gone. And now look how many valence electrons sodium has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So sodium is stable. And then chlorine had seven valence electrons, but now it's gained one. So now it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons. So that's what makes these bonds work. If you notice, when sodium gives away that valence electrons, it gets a positive charge. And when chlorine gains that valence electron, it gets a negative charge. Let's take a look at aluminum chloride. So let's look at aluminum. Aluminum, if we locate it on the periodic table for the valence electrons, aluminum has three valence electrons. So let's go ahead and show that. I go ahead and demonstrate it right here to make the illustration simple for us. And then if we locate chlorine on the periodic table, chlorine has seven valence electrons. So each one of these chlorines is going to have seven valence electrons. And one more. So now, sodium, aluminum is a metal. And these chlorines are non-metals. So once again, remember, ionic bond is a bond between opposite charges between metals and non-metals. So we look, is it easier for aluminum to gain seven of valence electrons, or is it easier for chlorine just to gain one valence electron? You guess it, it's easier for chlorine to gain one valence electron. So what is aluminum going to do? It's going to give away its three valence electrons. Now, since aluminum gave away three valence electrons, aluminum is going to get a plus three charge. And we can also show this by looking at the oxidation number table. So here's aluminum right there. And if you look up, it has a plus three charge, which means that it has three more protons than electrons. And then if we look at chlorine, each one of these chlorines has a negative one charge now. And I look over at chlorine. Chlorine now has a negative one charge. Now what you may be asking yourself is, why do we need three chlorines? Well, let's take a look at this. If we only had two chlorines, then there would be still one more valence electron left. So we would need three in order to get all those valence electrons from aluminum. Also, we can look at it like this. Aluminum has a plus three charge. Chlorine has a negative one charge. And we're gonna use this method called the cross method. And what we're going to do is, we're gonna take our charges and bring them down to the bottom for the subscripts when we write our chemical formula. So that negative one comes down here, except we don't write the negative one at the bottom because it's already understood. And then that positive three actually comes down to the bottom over here. And we don't put the plus sign when we actually write our chemical formulas. So that's why we have one aluminum and three chlorines. Let's take a look at beryllium oxide. Let's locate beryllium on the periodic table. And there's two right there, two valence electrons. And let's locate oxygen on the periodic table. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So if oxygen has six valence electrons, how many more does it need? Oxygen actually needs two more valence electrons in order to be stable. So what does beryllium do? 
it gives its two valence electrons to oxygen. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the resulting charge of each. Beryllium had four protons and four electrons, which gave it a charge of zero. But when beryllium gave its two valence electrons to oxygen, now if you look at it, beryllium now has a plus two charge. Let's look at our oxidation number chart. And if we notice beryllium has a plus two charge. Let's look at oxygen. Oxygen had eight protons and eight electrons, which gave it a charge of zero. But now oxygen has eight protons and it gained two more electrons. So now oxygen now has a negative two charge. And how can we tell? We can also look at this oxidation number chart and look up. There's that negative two charge. So now beryllium has that positive two charge. Oxygen has that negative two charge. And these two charges cancel each other out. That's why you only see one beryllium and one oxygen. Now you will practice making the following ionic bonds. You will be given one minute to do so. And I will pause the video starting now. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, you should have your ionic bonds made. So let's go ahead and check and see if you got your bonds right. So our first one, we have potassium and we have fluorine. Potassium has one valence electron. Fluorine has seven valence electrons. And in this demonstration, potassium is going to give its one valence electron to fluorine which gives potassium that positive one charge and gives fluorine that negative one charge. Let's take a look at our next one. We have sodium plus sodium plus oxygen. So each sodium has one valence electron and oxygen has six valence electrons. So now, oxygen needs two more valence electrons so guess what each sodium is going to do? they are going to give their one valence electron to oxygen. So each sodium is going to have a plus one charge. And oxygen now is going to have a negative two charge. This is all right because these plus one plus one is plus two. Minus two gives you zero. So they bounce each other out. And then let's look at our last one. We have chlorine plus calcium plus chlorine. So calcium has two valence electrons. And each chlorine has seven valence electrons. So each chlorine needs one valence electron. So calcium is going to give away one of its electrons to each chlorine. So now calcium got rid of two electrons. So now it has a plus two charge. And now each chlorine has a negative one charge because each one has gained an additional electron. So we have that plus two, minus one, minus one, plus two, minus two is going to give us a charge of zero. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this tutorial was helpful and I hope you got those answers that are displayed on the screen. Let me know if you have any questions and leave your questions in the comment section. This is Chavis Spivey with Jordan Spivey and we're signing off and have a wonderful, awesome night. Peace and enjoy.